Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to keep working with the get method and we're going to improve it. In my previous example, we're working with this structure here where we generate someone's grade based on a percentage. And we went from just creating this variable and just assigning it a static value to now assigning it to whatever the get method finds in the URL. So just to recap, this is the syntax, right? Notice the square brackets there. It's an associative array looking for something called GRD in the URL, which is here. And so in this case, the percentage was 150. That got evaluated. It fell into this first bucket right here, and that's where the A comes from. However, this is a weird example, right? It's, it's still pretty static. Uh, I would manually, I hard-coded something into the URL. So in this example, we're gonna create a form and that introduces some more problems, but it also makes this go from something that's purely just you know some kind of academic example, and it's going to transition it into something that's worthwhile. So I'm going to start by creating a form, all right? And so one thing I will illustrate here is that I could just echo this out in PHP, but since it's pure HTML, there's really no reason I can't just write something like form. All right, so I'm going to open my form here, and I'm going to go down and close my form. Not going to have a whole lot inside of it. Probably gave myself too much room. And so another one is so action. So action means when it submits, where is the script uh, that it's going to get processed by? And so I'm going to have this form pass the data to itself, which is kind of weird, but we're going to do it. So my file is called demo.php. So my action is going to be demo.php. And then the last attribute that I'm going to use for this form is the method. All right, and the method we're going to use is get and basically what that means is anything that gets submitted with this form is going to be passed via the URL such as that like that right there is what it's going to look like undoubtedly as you've browsed web pages in your life before sometimes you start coming across pages and you get these huge strings of things well guess what they're using get and so if I'm getting then I'm going to be getting here as well so right I could switch these out and make them into posts and that is actually what I do because typically when you're doing a form and you're doing some somewhat sensitive information that you're submitting to a database or something along those lines you probably might not want that information to be visible within the URL think about a username and a password uh, certainly you wouldn't want to pass it this way and so even if and then in that case you want to use a post but typically in the development phase where I'm gonna make some mistakes I use a get and then at the end I use a find and replace turn all my gets to posts and as long as I'm consistent uh, it works out just fine so you probably didn't watch this video for the discourse but hey you got some alright so within my form I'm gonna have some inputs and my first one's gonna be type equals text Notice that I am using single quotes in my HTML. That's just a convention that I follow uh, because oftentimes I do echo out PHP. Uh, I use PHP to echo out HTML. So if I use double quotes for all my echoes and I use single quotes for all these attributes, uh, I'm gonna be able to echo them out well. And that's why I do what I do. So I'm gonna have an input, it's type is text. Its name is going to be, and so here's where I'm gonna make it coincide with that. I'm gonna call it GRD. All right, I could have called it anything in the world, but I'm, oops, I'm trying to fix my work here. So if I call it GRD, then whatever I pass is gonna work up in here. All right, so that's gonna work. That means I have an input. <laughs> it sounds like an input, but it's an input. All right, it's type is text. Uh, and all uh, the other thing I'm gonna have on here is I'm just gonna have a, a submit button. All right, so type is going to be submit. And that is really all I need to do. But if I put value on there, that's essentially saying what's the default text going to be. Let's just say it's a submit, right? That's kind of confusing when you got type submit, value submit. This is what's going to display on the button. This is not an HTML tutorial. So I'm telling you that what's going to happen now is if you enter something in this text box here, it's going to get processed by this right here. And so this introduces a whole new problem, and I'm going to make some more videos on it later on. I go here. Don't mind this. I'm going to run this, and I'm going to get a warning. Oh, I would hope to get a warning. Um, I'm not, oh, sorry, I, I'm thinking I'm going to a warning, but uh, you see this up here, right? Here's my form, which does nothing, but notice I didn't clear that out. Let me show you that problem I was talking about. Actually, let's make this thing run. Let's put in 75, and let's see if it gets processed. And you'll notice I put this here, I press submit, and since the action was this form, 
puts it up here and guess what I get it so it's up here in the URL and you can see that PHP was able to pick that out of the URL process it and generate a C but the problem with a form that processes itself like this is this right the first time the user goes to this form there's not going to be any data that's to get right and I press this and undefined, right? So you can see perfectly well why the get is generating a notice because there's nothing up here. And so this is a one-time deal and this is probably an okay time to show you what error suppression looks like. So I know that this is what's generating the notice right here. Now you can turn off notices on your web server or you can do the at symbol and it's not like it's commenting it out, but it, it, what it is saying, it's like you, the developer, know that you are going to have some problems right here, possibly. And if you just didn't want to generate an error notice, which you definitely don't want to if this page is, is live, right? And uh, you can turn that off. And you notice it says I fail. Why is that? Well, right, it's our else. I mean, it's nothing sure as heck isn't uh, greater than 70. So we end up here in this fail bucket. I'm going to tell you the error just suppressing your notices is like putting a Band-Aid over a gunshot wound. It's really not the answer to your problems. I mean, it makes it look a little better, but you've got problems underneath the service surface. And so what you really need to do ultimately is you need to ensure, basically you check whether this is the first time the user is visiting the page. Now, if the, view, if the user enters garbage, like I did right here, entering nothing, Right, that doesn't generate a notice. It's it's garbage, right? Garbage in, garbage out. That's something that I say a lot. I think most programmers do. There's not a whole lot I can do to stop the user from doing that, right? And that doesn't generate a notice either. I mean, the, the user just doesn't know how to use the form. That's okay, I guess. All right, I do 100, I submit it, and uh, it works like that. So there's all kinds of strategies for validating data, so ensuring that it was a, not a meaningless uh, number that they typed in there or a string. And we can also test to see whether anything is up there at all. But uh, those are topics that are a few videos down the road. In my next one, I'll show you how to make this from a get into a post. Uh, that should actually be a short one, so be sure to watch that. Thanks for tuning in.